So I want to talk to you about Markov's equation. That is this equation here. It's a Diophantine equation, and Michael Penn on his YouTube channel uh, gave a really nice method of determining solutions. And in fact, he gave you this method where you can start with a solution, which is, say, uh, 1, 1, 2. And you can see this as a solution because you get 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, and that's going to give you uh, 4, 5, 6. And that is the same as 3 times 1 times 1 times 2 which is 6. So this gives you 6 is equal to 6. And so this triple, a Markov triple, is called a solution. And so Michael Penn gave you a method where you can start with this solution, the sort of base of a tree. He gave you a methodology where you can start with this one and you can get some new solutions out of these guys. And if you want to see how he derived this tree of solutions, then you can go ahead and watch his video. It's a really good video. And I want to tell you how to get one branch. And that is the branch involving the Fibonacci sequence. And so what we're going to do is we're going to demand that one of these numbers is always 1. And this corresponds to, say, staying on this branch of the tree and just following it down this way. And when you do that, it turns out that the only things that can fit here and here are Fibonacci numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking this lemma and proving it. And when we do, we're going to have a nice little equation that comes out of this lemma here. And this can be applied to solving Markov's equation when we choose z to be 1, say. So let's start with a case where n is equal to 1. And that's going to be our base case. And so this is going to give us this. So we get 1, 1, 1, 0. And we know that 0 is, say, the 0th Fibonacci number, if you'd like. It doesn't really matter where you start this, depending on your own tastes. And then we know that the second one is going to be 1, or rather f1 is 1. And once we have that, then we know that f of 0 plus f of 1 is equal to f of 2. And that is going to be 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. So f2 is 1. So I say that this is f0, this is f1. This is f1, and this one, you could call it f1, but I'm going to call it f2. So what we have shown is that for the base case, n equals 1, this lemma is true. So let's assume it's true for n is bigger than or equal to 1. So we're assuming the lemma is true for n bigger than or equal to 1. That basically means that 1, 1, 1, 0 to the nth power is equal to fn plus 1, fn, fn, and f naught. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this matrix by 1, 1, 1, 0. And that gets me 1, 1, 1, 0 to the n plus first power. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Uh, that should not be a naught. That should be an n minus 1. My mistake. Sorry. n minus 1. So I go ahead and I take this matrix and I multiply it by this one. And what you end up getting is this. So 1 and 1 here is going to multiply by this vector here. And so that's going to be uh, fn plus 1 plus fn. Then this row multiplies by this. And we're going to have fn plus fn minus 1. And then this row, oh, sorry, this row multiplies by this, and it gives me fn plus 1. And this row multiplies by this, and it gets me fn. Well, we can use our Fibonacci sequence identity, the, the definition up here, in order to get uh, what we want. So this is going to be fn plus 2. This gets me fn plus 1. This is already fn plus 1, and this is fn. And so, ta-da, I have proven the lemma with induction. So there we go. We now know that this matrix, 1, 1, 1, 0, raised to the nth power, is equal to this. And 
So we're going to use that. So let's see how we can use this. I'm going to take the determinant of both sides here. Take a look at the determinant of 1, 1, 1, 0 to the nth power. And I know that's going to be the same as the determinant of fn plus 1, fn, fn, and fn minus 1. And so the determinant is the same. The determinant, so the determinant of a product is the same as a product of the determinants. So I can write this like this, determinant 1, 1, 1, 0 to the nth power is equal to, let's go ahead and take this determinant, so this is fn plus 1 times fn minus 1 minus fn squared. And this determinant here is 0 minus 1. So this is minus 1, and this gives us minus 1 to the nth power. So now we have worked out a new identity for the Fibonacci sequence. And that identity is this. It's fn plus 1 times fn minus 1 minus fn squared is equal to negative 1 to the nth power. And so we're going to use this idea to solve Markov's equation. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to start with Markov's equation, and I'm going to rewrite it. So we get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 3xyz. I'm going to select z to be 1. And so that's going to give me x squared plus y squared plus 1 is equal to 3x times y. Now I'm going to take two of these guys, I'm going to move them to the other side, and then I'm going to move uh, the negative 1 over. And so I'm rewriting this equation, and I'm going to get x squared plus y squared minus 2xy is equal to xy minus 1. And when I do that, I can factor this guy as a quadratic, x minus y quantity squared is equal to xy minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that when I select, we're going to set x to be fn plus 1, and I'm going to set y is equal to fn minus 1. And when I do that, every, and when I do that, it's going to turn out that And when I do that, what's going to happen is it's going to turn out that it, for every other... Uh, and so now let me go ahead and put these two guys into my equation. I'm going to start on the left. I'm going to show that we're going to end up getting to the right. And so this is our sort of equivalent form of Markov's equation when we select z is equal to 1. Okay, so we're going to start with fn plus 1. And we're going to put in fn minus 1. This is our x and y choice. And this is squared. And what I'm going to see is that this fn plus 1 turns into fn plus fn minus 1. And so that's going to leave me, after a subtraction here, with just fn on the inside. And we're seeing that is squared. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this and we're going to go ahead and rearrange it. And this rearrangement is pretty simple. It's going to give us fn plus 1 times fn minus 1 minus negative 1 to the nth power. And that is equal to fn squared. And so now we're going to take this fn squared and we're going to replace it with this equation. And so that gets us fn plus 1 times fn minus 1 minus negative 1 to the n. OK. So we're practically there. Remember, this was our x, and this is our y. And so now I'm subtracting negative 1 to the nth power. What we want is we want to have x times y minus 1. This is our goal. And so negative 1 to the n is only going to be 1 whenever n is even. So we know that if I replace n with 2n, 
this works. And so I can say it works for n, uh, n being equal to, say, 2m. All right, so then I see that I have my solutions. My solutions are going to be when I have x is equal to fn plus 1, y equals fn minus 1. So that gets us our solutions. So we get x is f of 2m plus 1, y is f of 2m minus 1, and we get, so we can go ahead and take a look at a few examples of those, and you'll see that these are exactly the numbers that, say, Michael Penn had at the end of his video. And so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and write down the Fibonacci sequence. So it's going to be 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, uh, 34. So the initial answer we got was 1, 1, 2. That was one solution. The other solution would be, so this was, remember, this is f1, f2, 5, etc. And now what we can see is that we're going to just be picking uh, 1 is going to be always there. And we need to put two others in there. And those are going to come from our odd members of our Fibonacci sequence. And so that's going to be, say, uh, 2 and 5. Then we have say 5 and say 13. And so let's go ahead and see if these actually end up working for us. I'm not really keen on doing a lot of arithmetic, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. So we end up having 1 squared plus 2 squared, and we're going to add 5 squared. And we want to know, is this equal to 3 times 1 times 2 times 5? Right? So that's our question. Let's see. So that's going to be 1 plus 4, that's 5. That's 25. That's going to give us 30. And 3 times 2 times 5 is 30 here. And so that's a check. That works. And now let's take a look at this one uh, 1, 5, and 13. And so what we're going to have is we have 1 squared plus 5 squared plus 13 squared. And so that should be equal to 3 times 1 times 5 times 13. And so, again, that's our question. And so then we have 25 plus 1. And so that's going to be 26 plus 169. And so we would like that to be equal to uh, 15 times 13. And let's see, so uh, oh, 6. So nine is going to give us 5, uh, that's 8, 9, and so that's 1 there. And so we are wondering, is this equal to 15 times 13? And we can work that out really quick, 15 times 13. And so that's going to give us uh, 5, 1, 3, uh, 4, 45, and then that gets us uh, 0, 5, 1, and that gets us 195. 195 there. And that's a check. And so we see that we have now found a whole family of solutions, an infinite family of solutions, to this Markov's equation, where we set z is equal to 1, and we look at x and y being consecutive Fibonacci members uh, that are of odd index. So the first time I saw Markov's equation here was when I was in graduate school, and that was years ago. And we went through the same sort of spiel that Michael Penn did. I always thought that this was a really clever approach to the problem, and, and I cooked it up while I was a graduate student, but I've never really had an occasion to tell anybody about it. So Michael Penn's video gave me a chance to, to give it a try. And so I also thought, you know, I haven't been having time to put together long, drawn-out videos, so maybe I'll try this in a sort of Michael Penn style, although I don't have a really cool chalkboard like he does. I uh, hope you don't mind, uh, Dr. Penn, but uh, I went ahead and gave this a shot. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.